What prophecy and other mysteries shall we discover? Let's take a look. To fulfill <coughs> the prophecy, <coughs> you must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Damn it. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth. And now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. <laughs> well, we all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you <laughs> someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. So she takes us to lunch. <laughs> okay. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time. Step up and tell them you're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? I think that's A. Oh, well. Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool! Hmm. <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Diesel. He likes my gumption. I'll be watching your performance. He's gonna be watching. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. I don't want him to put a stop to it. Let's go. I got this, probably. Or I'll die. I don't know. One of those. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. Sportsing. Is that a word? Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer! Let's go, Sprinkles! <laughs> Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready! It is kind of blashing me. I don't know if you guys saw, like, my face turn red now, and it's not because of Daddy Sanders. I mean, Colonel. Yeah, whatever. That's what I'm talking about! The Sprinkles. Aroo! I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message uh, I hope its message lifts you to victory. <gasps> Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him here again. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. I'm gonna make potatoes again? Okay. Think fast. The timer runs down. We'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does the water boil at? Oh my god. <laughs> no, no. I picked fast. What were you thinking, Diesel? Get your head in the game. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spice did he say he used? 10, 7, 11. It's 11. That's right. You might not know all of the ingredients. Man, that red timer really makes me nervous. Not going to lie. I don't know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Vigilance, trust, gratitude, Gah, vigilance. Damn it, I was wrong. What state of mind? I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. What's the next question? Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? Hold down. That's right. This is your shot. And you're not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss my shot. Mm, get it from Hamilton? Right? Yeah. Anyway. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Silence. S sizzling. Damn it. That was wrong? Is it silence? Don't make me get the spray bottle. You wouldn't dare. Is this the end? Yep! Dang it! <laughs> I died! 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay. So it might be silence because people are like eating a bunch and whatever. All right, they're on. Uh, I'm just ready. I freaking hate this timer. It always boils in 100 seconds. It must be Celsius. Oh, thank God. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Right. First try. <laughs> oh my God. Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. I want the belly rubs. Okay. I'm going to need to season. La 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 la. It's 11. Whew. Oh my God. He's happy. Tail wagging intensifies. Elevate my craft. Oh God. It's not vigilance. It's Gratitude! Oh, thank god. Whew. That's right, you must- I'm just is really- I'm very into this quiz right now, like... I'm scared. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you. She's stronger and faster. My child, my dad, small town. Yes! Whew. We're good. You try to shout the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. Alright, final success. I think it's silence! Yeah! Because when they taste your cooking, they will be so taken with it that they'll be unable to speak. Okay. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Diesel. Oh my god! They made that so sweet. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome. Except knowing he's watching makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders on his adorable horsey. How many spoons full of gravy? Oh, what a <laughs> Oh, no. What? Victorian bathtub? What were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. <sighs> Fine. Grr. You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? Oh, no. I'm distracted again. What a hunk. I, I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? <laughs> you fail. You're falling behind. Colonel Sanders riding together. No, you're Colonel Sanders. What? Oh my God! None of those were right. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? <laughs> woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. We're totally screwed. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Was it Clank? Uh, yikes! I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Diesel does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. Is he is he disappointed? When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixture to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Uh-oh. Diesel, no! Yeah, turn it off first, I think. But you're not fast enough, and your hand gets struck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of your life. I mean, the rest of the match. Hmm. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. <laughs> oh boy. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with my completed dish ready to serve. <laughs> Surely that makes me the winner by default. Uh, no, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Diesel's injury. You see Sprinkles, be <laughs> you see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. That looks pretty good, actually. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Diesel to do the honor, but 
since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. That's freaking awesome! Inside you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette, a top of sauce, slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, tender nugget, and pearls of blueberry chile. Chila? Jalin? I'm not fancy game! I don't know these words! What? That looks incredible! Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not as impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Oh, but perhaps not impressed. Yeah, as he dips. Hmm. hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks into his mustache. Uh-oh. Eternalize the rage you feel. Internalize? Or put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. Hmm. There's chocolate mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off of his glistening face. Colonel, oh, Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Dang it. <laughs> Try again. Okay, I'm sorry. You were saving that for later. I'll do better. Not again! Uh oh. Well, I think there's no. We have no choice but to fail. Alright, we know most of these things, so that's good. 11. I don't even need to read the questions now, but I might. Um, small town. And silence. But now, here's where. Oh god, looking over the horizon. Nope. Oh, see, none of those are right. Ah. Uh, Wedding vows. Oh crap. <laughs> and then they get injured, and then, oh god, no, 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 no. And then her beautiful dessert. It's freaking gorgeous. Hmm. <gasps> I'm just gonna internalize the rage I feel. Which is what I would do normally, actually. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face. Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, and perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. I have a broken hand, burned off my eyebrows. I am having a fantastic day. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. I knew it. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. <laughs> this game gets me so well. You try to hide from him. I'm yeah, nice. But he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Literally? Yeah. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. <laughs> You're not impressed that I can start fires with my eyes? What? We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer, and I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? Um, yeah, that's exactly what I think, actually. <laughs> well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. <laughs> but I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> I think I know what that is. We'll look that up later. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. 
Meals can be so cruel. My mind. No, this is my chicken. Uh oh. My mice discovered my KFC. That's what he was planning. Mules are adorable, actually. But they definitely they have an attitude. You stay over there. <laughs> I I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. It sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I thought he was cheering me up. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor or money, would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Where did you come from, Pop? <laughs> Actually, I'm surprised you're still alive. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. It's Pop. This is a spork monster! Battles scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the spork monster. Borko! It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight me to death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologized. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Oh, I'm so cute. Monster problems, am I right? Are you, are you talking to me? Am I a monster? Oh god. Oh, thanks, Porco. <laughs> really? Now? Now you play sexy? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Actually, maybe you're on to something. <laughs> Porco supremacy. This is a Porco dating sim now. <laughs> I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. It's true, I did just attack him and I could have defended and maybe he would have been friends and then he wouldn't have fought me. Whatever, it's, that's another time. I know that you're strong and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. Excuse me? There's so much lore here and it's in very unexpected places. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. Oh, that's even better. If you could be a golden retriever, be a golden retriever. But I was still a student until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book, hmm. Precisely, I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and I shouldn't rely on such. So uh, you're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. You got it, Borco. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Maybe that is actually getting romantic. <clears throat> it sounds like. <laughs> Hi, Trey. Thank you. I was doing that by a purpose. I wish I had a straw. I do have a straw. Crashing still hasn't come to collect his straw or the food. So, I stole his straw! Yay! Better. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen. Of life! <laughs> Diesel, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Did you say together? I heard together. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. I'm in! I'm in! Yes, I'll be there. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. He doesn't stay in the dorms like we have to? That was real fast. Look at this view! There's a freaking chicken! There's a baby with a goatee! This is perfect! <laughs> It 
would definitely be, especially by this, um, I'm going to say that's a gravy scented candle. I don't actually know though. Stepping into Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you've lived such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, and never stop imagining. Uh, how old did you say you were? <laughs> Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. <laughs> I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crisp. Um, both, perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? <clears> hmm. <throat> <sighs> this game it is a dating sim. Let's be vulnerable. We'll reveal it. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. <gasps> the shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <laughs> this coleslaw looks so freaking epic, not gonna lie. And I have some here too! Ah! It's perfect! <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire it ta its taste later and think back on this moment. He gets so excited about food! You can have it, I'll make some more. You, oh, you could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. <laughs> sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. Where, what, where are you going? Spork Monster! Do you just show up when I yell Spork Monster? Nah, probably not. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Oh yeah, we're snoopins. Oh, wow. Can you guys hear when I swallow? I don't know. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. Oh, sweet! Oh, God! I don't... Well, let's just do left to right. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. Oh, it's a safe. I see it now. That's definitely, that's definitely a safe. You think for a moment. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. Eleven! Eleven, eleven, eleven? I didn't mean to open your safe! I... was just starting on the left so I could click all the items! <laughs> I don't want... I don't wanna... I need to respect his privacy! Trust is important in a relationship! Oh god! I'm gonna die again! <sighs> okay, fine. Ah, uh, you find a single note. <laughs> oh, phew, thank god. Hmm. Can chicken be prepared? Oh, sashimi! I was like, sunshine? I sort of know how to read cursive. Sashimi style. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? I think, uh, no. Oh, thank god. Let's never speak of that, okay? Tap on an item. Yes. Baby picture! An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and mustache combo esports. You figure this must be the Colonel Sanders himself. And <laughs> the little chicken? They gave him a chicken with a bone? <laughs> it's so cute. He literally was born with it. That or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Is it a chicken rattle? I now want a chicken rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? This is a fair point. Me. Hmm. 
but he's he's that amazing. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded. <laughs> Am I right? Right. <clears throat> but would any other face suffice? Suffice. Would any other face want me to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken? Uh-uh. And also play a dating sim, then based on Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think we all know that answer. Okay, camel thing! Except he's... <laughs> Wait, what? This photo appears to be the colonel, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. How? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Is he aging backwards? Like Benjamin Buttons? Is that gonna be like a twist thing? Oh god! The door! Not the door! Ah! Ah! Mm, I want to know this candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Is it gravy? It's gotta be great. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? Boom. <laughs> no, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... <gasps> I can't see it. God damn it. Tap on an item to discover more. Oh, I already read that. Why do I keep reading that? Okay. I'm scared because this door opened. So I thought he was coming in here, but maybe I still have time. Okay, we'll click here. On the frame photo shows an old man who looks a bit like the colonel standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. I don't see any cheersing of drumsticks. Cheersing would be like, ah, yay. Oh, I can, I'll, I'll see it. Look, I am cheersing with sporks. Ah. Hmm. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. I wonder if Pete is ghost guy. Click on the urn. This better not say my friend Pete, also. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty. But when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Oh, this guy takes us seriously. Poor guy. I would uh, be impressed and mortified if somebody had that. I'd be like, yeah, go you, but also I'm leaving. I'm actually going to check out this comb. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Collect it. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. I don't get... I'm fine. Yeah, I'll leave it. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. It's a real stuffed chicken. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sandals when it was alive. It's very cute. That's a cute chicken. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. I respect it. That's awesome. <laughs> um... I want to do the door last, because I think that's going to take us to a different room. Gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? What? Wait, what? Never. I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... I can't. Can't you see him in the middle of something? I was gazing out the window. You open the window a crack, and the ghost of ghost of a student is swept out with a breeze. That's so mean. I th I would kind of want to know his name before I open the window. You know. That's okay. <laughs> you open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. No, no. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. Give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks why you're wearing his jacket. <laughs> I'd be like, hmm? What? Oh, this? <laughs> I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap. <laughs> you forgot to take it off. You decide that now is your moment to make a big move. You tell them you're cold, 
You fess up and tell the truth. Big move, let's go. Ah, damn it. Wait, I thought the big move was, okay. This isn't that kind of game. Not that we blame you for trying, <laughs> but still. God dang it, oh my God, killed me again. Um, do you die? Is it normal to die this much? No! In a dating sim. Like, I feel like I just, I'm dying a lot here. Spark Monster, freaking love you, man. I'm really happy we ended on good terms with Spork Monster. Uh, uh, reveal it. See the Kosa? Yes, it's beautiful. And... I want to do the ghost guy again, because maybe... Maybe it'll give you... Me another option. Nope, there's literally... I just murder him again. Goodbye, ghost guy. Okay. Oh, alright. I want to see the chicken again. I like the chicken. He's very cute. And... So, I wonder which... How did I open the door? Was it this lock? Or was it... Oh, it was. Okay, it was the safe. Dun dun dun! Jacket! Excuse me, I'm in the jacket. Um, I'm just gonna tell him the truth. You confess. I think I've... I thought that was the big move! Game, I... This is a big move to me, okay? I think I've developed feelings for you. Oh my god, he's so back! Okay. <gasps> I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Yeah, you do have an urn of anything that, you know, failures and stuff. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Diesel. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. While he was talking. Hopefully not. Dream sequence! Da -na 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 -na. What is Colonel Sanders doing with his rooster out? <laughs> you mean the, the taxidermy chicken? He's stuffed. But he was very important. It's the true bird of Kentucky. Dream sequence. We are not swimming towards the light again. Okay, we got a bird. It's in the evil people. So there's the ghost guy again. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. He's just staring at me. I love you. Attack it with love. Okay. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Well, I didn't die the second time, so we'll see. Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. That would definitely be one of the perks of dating Colonel Sanders. Here is a simple breakfast I just whipped up. I love it so much! <laughs> Potatoes? Biscuit? Wait. I think it's just a biscuit. Well, I still love it, but I definitely thought one of those was potatoes. <laughs> it's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Will you marry me? Just kidding. <laughs> so, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous, but yes. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. <laughs> of course, why would you mean anything else? Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. It's a dating sim after all this game has reminded me. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. And after we just decided to go slow. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings and what he was saying, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. 
You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Uh, because I had one heck of a night! I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you! I got worried that something had happened to you! Uh, it's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam! Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. <clears throat> Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, actually, research shows, I'm gonna sound kind of nerdy here, but if you go on like something really exciting, they're likely to attach excitement with you and it's a good thing and relationships last longer. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened. But the emotional connection. <laughs> Wowzers. Miriam tells me... <laughs> That's a button. It's not even a dialogue box. Miriam tells you, move on from this old Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. <laughs> if being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. Unicorn said that earlier. She's going to be so excited when she plays this game and gets to, gets to that scene. <laughs> That's like word for word what she said <laughs> in chat. <laughs> After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Wait, what? I just lost my best friend? Uh, oh. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Don't even mess with me, bro. I've had roller coasters of emotions. <clears throat> You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he finds he, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact, <laughs> because you know he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great! I'll order you up one right away. I need to. I don't know his voice. You guys are gonna have to do that. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. <laughs> you can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. Touche, Van Van. Touche. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Uh, I can't tell if you said that because you're a decent person now. Hmm. You've got some nerve, Diesel. Sug suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse? I know. Who would dare say that? You're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. Never! Oh, I'll never give up! Ever! Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Very intuitive. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Diesel, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. <laughs> That's actually really funny. That was a good one. <laughs> Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. Oh! Burn! <laughs> that means it tasted bad. 
Oh, that's a lot of words to say. It was bland. <laughs> Excuse me, Diesel. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. Oh, shoot. We messed up again. Uh, see you inside, Diesel. Damn it. Okay. Annoyed by Colonel's, Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how you slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Hmm. Whoa! That's that book! It looks like bad news! Are we friends again? Or... It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That's, that's a bad idea. Let's, let's do Ashley. Ashley loves being remembered. Uh, oh my god. No. That is way drastic. Couldn't you maybe do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times, times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory-erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. That's so horrible. I don't know about that. It's gonna make me choose. It's gonna... Uh, oh my god. Oh, uh, nah. Uh. Mmm. I feel like there's a really horrible reason to use this spell. I'm gonna not do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Oh, we didn't die. Yet. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. It clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose crunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Crunches up and breathing quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. That can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I would not give him old homework. I'm gonna wait to see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you never to come back here! Terrence! I will destroy you! Terrence! <laughs> okay. Sprinkles is barking, barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder... Is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Diesel, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see... Why me? What? But before I can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. I don't know what it was. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! Will KFC cook us a bucket of broken hearts? Find out next time on I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-looking good dating simulator. <laughs>